Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Higher Revision video. There's five weeks to go into your GCSE Labs exam, or 35 days, and today we're going to focus on the topic of the quadratic formula. So we've looked at how to solve quadratic equations using factorization. Now let's see how we can use the quadratic formula to solve those quadratic equations. So the quadratic formula is given to you, but it's x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. And in this video, I'm going to go for an example for you. Then there'll be a couple for you to try, and then we've got a wordy question as well. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at the quadratic formula. So we've looked at how to solve quadratic equations by using factorization, but what if the quadratic doesn't factorize? Well, one approach we could use is to use the quadratic formula. So if you've got a quadratic equation in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, so in other words, when you've got the quadratic equals zero, you can solve it using the quadratic formula, which is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. And that formula is given to you, so it's not something that you need to learn off by heart, but actually it's something that if you're doing A-level maths or AS maths, you probably will get to learn off by heart. And actually, you might even know it off by heart at GCSE level if you wanted to, but it's given to you anyway. And we've been given a question that says to solve 2x squared minus x minus 9 equals 0. So we're going to use the quadratic formula to solve this quadratic equation. So whenever I'm using the quadratic formula, the first thing I do is I look at my quadratic and make sure it equals 0, which it does, and then I write down the values for a, b, and c. So a is the coefficient of x squared it's the number in front of the x squared, which in this case is 2, so a is equal to 2. b is the number in front of x, is the coefficient of x, so here we've got minus x, which means minus 1x, so b is equal to minus 1. And c is the number, the constant on the end, so here we've got minus 9, so c is equal to minus 9. So we've got a is equal to 2, b is equal to minus 1, and c is equal to minus 9. Now we're going to substitute those values into the quadratic formula and we're going to find our values for x. So we've got the x equals, so we've got negative b. Now b is equal to negative 1, so when we do negative b, that's minus minus 1, so that's just 1, so that's going to be 1. And then we've got plus or minus, and then we've got the square root of, and we've got b squared, so that's going to be minus 1 squared, so minus 1, and I put that in a bracket, squared, minus. And then we've got 4ac, Now I like to put this all in a bracket, so I like to do 4 multiplied by whatever a is, which is 2, multiplied by whatever c is, which is negative 9. And I like to put that whole thing in a bracket, it just helps me because I've got a minus here, and it just helps me make sure that if this is a minus, that I remember a minus and a minus and so on. So we've got our 4ac part, and I just put that whole thing in a bracket. And then all divided by 2a, now a is equal to 2, so 2a would be 4. So that's 2 times a, 2 times 2 is equal to 4, so 2a is 4. Okay, so we've got x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of minus 1 squared minus, and then in brackets, 4 times 2 times minus 9 close brackets all divided by 4 okay now let's work this out so we've got x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of so we've got minus 1 squared well minus 1 squared would be 1 because a negative times a negative is a positive so we've got 1 and then we've got our minus and now let's work out what goes inside the brackets we've got 4 times 2 times minus 9 and 4 times 2 times minus 9 will be equal to minus 72 close brackets and that's all divided by 4 so we've worked that out so far so now we've got x equals 1 plus or minus now let's work out what's under this square root we've got 1 minus minus 72 so it's going to be 1 plus 72 which is 73 so 73 all divided by 4 now at this point we've got 1 plus or minus the square root of 73 so we're going to have the x equals 1 plus the square root of 73 divided by 4 so that's going to give us one answer or or you could write and there or and it's up to you x equals 1 minus the square root of 73 divided by 4 because we're going to get two solutions x equals something or x equals something or x equals something and x equals something depending on what way you prefer to write it okay so now we just need to work these out we're going to do 1 plus the square root of 73 divided by 4 in our calculator and we're going to do 1 minus the square root of 73 divided by 4 in our calculator and let's do that and see what we get x equals 2.3860009366 and so on or in this case x equals negative 1.8860 zero zero nine three six and so on now normally in a question with the quadratic formula it'll say give you answers to one decimal place or two decimal places and so on and the next question there'll be a question where i'd specify how many numbers of decimal places to give it to in this case i'm just going to round these to one decimal place so, so that means our two solutions to one decimal place would be x equals 2.4 or or and x equals minus 1.9 and that's it there are two solutions and that's it. So we've solved that quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. And that's it. So that quadratic formula, it's given to you. So on the formula sheet, you've got the quadratic formula there for you. But it's important that you're able to use it so you know how to work it out. And for instance, stuff like knowing that the 4ac part is quite useful to put it in brackets. That become quite useful. And remembering that if you had minus 1 squared to put that minus 1 in brackets, that so you're squaring minus 1. If you just type it into your calculator, minus 1 squared, it might give you the wrong answer. So it's important to know how to use that quadratic formula. 
Okay, now here's a question for you to try yourself, so feel free to pause the video and to try this question. And the question says solve x squared minus 10x plus 3 equals 0, and to give your answers to one decimal place. So feel free now to press pause and to solve this question. Okay, so here we've got a quadratic equal 0, so that's great, and let's label what a, b, and c are. So a is the number in front of the x squared, the coefficient of x squared. So here it's a 1x squared, so a is equal to 1. Now b, it's the coefficient of x, so that's the number in front of the x, that's going to be minus 10. And c is the constant, the number on the end, so it's going to be 3. So c is equal to 3. So we've got our a, b, and c. Now let's write down the quadratic formula. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. So that's the quadratic formula. Now we're going to substitute in our values to then find our values for x. So x equals negative b, so negative b. Now b is already negative, so negative b will be positive, so that's going to be 10, plus or minus, and then we've got the square root of b squared, so that's going to be b's negative 10, so that's negative 10 squared. I'm just putting that in brackets, minus, and then we've got our 4ac part. I like to put that in brackets, so that's going to be 4 multiplied by a, which is 1, multiplied by c, which is 3, close brackets, and just make that a bit longer, that's square root, and that's all divided by 2a, a is equal to 1, 2 times a, 2 times 1 will be 2. So we've got the x equals 10, plus or minus the square root of negative 10 squared, subtract 4 times 1 times 3, close brackets, all divided by 2. So now let's work some of this out, so we've got the x equals 10, plus or minus the square root of negative 10 squared, well that's going to be 10, negative 10 times negative 10, which is 100. So subtract 4 times 1 times 3, well, that's 4 times 1, which is 4, times 3, which is 12, so subtract 12, all divided by 2. Now we've then got 10 plus or minus the square root of 100, take away 12 is 88, divided by 2. So fantastic, we're doing really well here. I'm just going to write it up here, I'm just going to write this up here. So, so it says give your answers to two decimal places, so we've got two answers here, that either x equals 10 plus the square root of 88 divided by 2, or, or and, x equals 10 minus the square root of 88 divided by 2. So we've got our two solutions, now we just need to work them out. x equals 9.6904 and so on, and here you get that x is equal to 0 0.309 and so on. And we've been asked to give our answers to one decimal place, that means that either x equals 9.7 or, or and, x equals 0.3. So there are two solutions, x equals 9.7 and x equals 0.3, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at one more question. Now, this time I've got a wordy question. It says a field has got a width of x meters and a length of 2x plus 1 meters. And it says the area of the field is 600 meters squared. I've been asked to find the width and the length of the field. And the question might say maybe we could perhaps give your answers to one or two decimal places. So we're going to solve this and we're going to give our answers to one or two decimal places. And often that's the clue. Going back, that's often the clue that's a quadratic formula question that it says give your answers to so many decimal places. That's sort of a clue that you're probably not going to be factorizing that the quadratic formula might be the approach to use. Okay, so we've got a field, it's a rectangular field, I should have written that, a rectangular field. It's got a width of x metres, so x, and it's got a length of 2x plus 1 metres. And the area of the field is 600 metres squared. And we've been asked to find the width and the length of the field. So that means that the length multiplied by the width is the area. So that means that x multiplied by 2x plus 1 is equal to 600. The width times the length is equal to the area. So now if we expand our brackets, we're going to get x times 2x is 2x squared x times 1 will be plus x, and that is equal to 600. So here we've got a quadratic equation. Now remember to use the quadratic formula, we want it to equal 0, so we're going to take away 600 from both sides, and that'll give us 2x squared plus x minus 600 is equal to 0. So we just rearrange that to make it equal to 0. So let's write down what our a, b, and c are. So a is the coefficient of x squared, so a is equal to 2. b is the coefficient of x, and in front of x, that's plus x, which is plus 1x, so b is equal to 1. And c is the constant, so c is equal to minus 600. So we've got our values for a, b, and c, and then we're going to substitute them into our quadratic formula to get our values for x. So here, let's write down the quadratic formula. The x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. So let's substitute in our values x equals negative b, so it's going to be negative 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, that's 1 squared, well 1 squared is 1, or 1 squared, I'm just going to write 1 squared to begin with, subtract and then in brackets, 4 times a times c, so 4 multiplied by a, which is 2, multiplied by c, which is minus 600, minus 600, close brackets. I'm just going to extend my square root sign, and then scroll down a little bit, and that's all divided by 2a, a is equal to 2, so 2a would be 2 times 2 is 4. 
So we've got that x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 2 times minus 600, close brackets, all divided by 4. So now let's simplify this. So we've got that x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared is 1, subtract, and then in brackets here we've got, so 4 times 2 is equal to 8, times minus 600 would be minus 4,800, close brackets, all divided by 4. Okay, now let's have a look at what's under this square root sign. We've got 1 minus minus 4,800, so it's 1 plus 4,800, which would be x equals minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 4,800, which would be 4,801, all divided by 4. Okay, so now we've got x equals minus 1 plus the square root of 4,801 divided by 4, or x equals negative 1 minus the square root of 4,801 divided by 4. So let's write those both out. So here, if we work this out, we get that x is equal to 17.0723 and so on, meters. Or here, x is equal to minus 17.572 and so on, meters. Now, if we go back up to this question, look at our rectangle, x was the width. We can't have a negative width of this field, so this solution cannot exist. So we've only got this solution here. So that means that x is equal to 17.0723 and so on, meters. Now, we've been asked to find the width and the length of the field. So we're going to take our 17.0723 and so on. We're going to multiply that by 2 and add 1. And that means the length of the field is 35.1446 and so on meters. So we've got the width of the field and the length of the field. So let's write that down. The width of the field, the width, would be equal to 17.07 meters to two decimal places. And the length of the field would be equal to 35.14 meters to two decimal places. And that's it. So that's the width and the length of the field. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at how to use the quadratic formula to solve those quadratic equations. It can be really useful, particularly whenever it doesn't factorize. And remember, including the question can be whenever it says, give your answer to one decimal place or give your answers to two decimal places and so on. So this is a bit of a clue that you might be using the quadratic formula rather than factorization. And it's important to remember how to type it into your calculator and how to work it out. So remembering particularly that B squared part and also the 4AC part to be careful there whenever you're typing that into your calculator. So there's five weeks to go into your GCC Mavis exam or 35 days. You're going through these videos rightly, so hopefully they've been helpful and hopefully they're helping you boost your confidence with those topics that we've gone through so far. Also remember on the website, we've got the ultimate higher revision video, and then there's the accompanying booklet as well. So that ultimate higher revision video, it goes through all the topics on GCC higher perhaps one or two minutes on each topic or two or three minutes in each topic rather than these videos which are a bit more in detail. So that ultimate revision video might be useful and also there's that question booklet that goes with that ultimate higher revision video. So that's on the website and I'll put a link to it in the description below. But there's five weeks to go. Keep up the hard work. You're doing incredibly well and, and good luck. Cheers.